our history. Deep within prestigious museums, among mummies and relics, lie silent warriors, intricately carved Maori masks with a chilling legend. Crafted before battle, these masks weren't mere decorations, they were vessels. The souls of fallen warriors, the Maori believed, resided within, forever echoing the clash of steel and the roar of battle. But these echoes whispered a dark secret. Harmless to men, the masks unleashed misfortune upon deemed unclean women. Pregnant or menstruating, they were vulnerable. A glance could bring illness, infertility, or death. The curse wasn't malicious, but a fierce protectiveness, the lingering spirit of the warrior guarding against those unfit to witness the battlefield's fury. This wasn't just campfire lore. An English museum, faced with these potent masks, posted a warning sign for women. Some scoffed, but the sign served as a stark reminder of the mask's power, even in silence. The Koinor Diamond, a 109 karat behemoth, shimmers with brilliance, but whispers of a sinister curse cling to its every facet. Legend claims it grants power and fortune to women, but for men, it's a harbinger of doom. Stolen from the Hindu god Krishna, if legends are to be believed, the diamond has left a bloody trail in its wake, a testament to its malevolent power. Shur Shah Suri, a mighty Indian emperor, exemplifies the curse's wrath. Having conquered Prince Humayun, he seized the Koh Noor, only to meet his demise in a freak cannon explosion. His empire, once a bastion of strength, crumbled as quickly as it rose. Even familial bonds couldn't withstand the diamond's darkness. Shur Shah's son, Jalal Khan, fell victim to his own brother-in-law's blade, another casualty in the Koh Noor's macabre game. Is it mere coincidence, or a chilling pattern? Some even say that the fall of the British Empire started when they stole the Koh Noor diamond from India and brought it to their land. What do you think? Leave your comments about it. In 1974, the earth yielded a treasure unlike any other. A group of Chinese farmers, wielding simple tools, stumbled upon a hidden army, thousands of life-sized terracotta warriors standing guard in an eternal vigil. News of the discovery sent a jolt through the world, rewriting history and igniting a tourism boom. China reveled in the glory, but for the farmers, fortune turned to misfortune. The men who unearthed this forgotten army became prisoners of their own discovery. While the nation prospered, their lives took a chilling turn. One, consumed by despair, took his life. The remaining survivors, ostracized from their land, found themselves peddling trinkets of the very warriors they had awakened. Debt clung to them like a shroud, and whispers of a curse swirled through the village. Was it mere coincidence, or a malevolent force unleashed by disturbing the slumber of the Terracotta army? The legend persists, the warriors, eternally loyal in death, protected only their emperor, leaving those who dared disturb their rest to face a bitter fate. Gazing from countless walls across England, a melancholic boy with tears in his oversized eyes became a chilling harbinger in the 1980s. Unexplained fires erupted in homes adorned with the crying boy print. Flames roared, consuming furniture, walls, lives, yet the prints emerged and scathed. Whispers of a curse spread like wildfire. Was it fate's cruel trick or a malevolent spirit within the artwork? Firefighters witnessed flames veering away from the portrait, leaving it untouched amidst devastation. The sheer number of fires fueled hysteria, turning the once popular print into a malevolent omen. Panic ensued. Newspapers stoked the flames with sensational headlines. People, gripped by fear, removed the prints from their homes. One tabloid held a public bonfire, inviting readers to send in their cursed paintings for destruction. The image of weeping boys consumed by flames became a chilling symbol. The true cause was traced to faulty print materials, a mundane explanation that couldn't erase the unnerving coincidence. The crying boy legend lives on, a cautionary tale of how a simple image can spark fear and ignite mass paranoia. Nestled within a London museum lies the Delhi Purple Sapphire, a gem shrouded in legend and soaked in an ethereal amethyst hue. Its allure belies a sinister history dating back to the mid-1800s, born from greed and stolen from an Indian temple. With each successive owner, misfortune descended like a relentless storm. Illness, financial ruin, and an overwhelming sense of dread haunted them, casting a shadow over their lives. 
the sapphire, once a symbol of beauty, transformed into a harbinger of doom. One such victim, writer Edward Heron Allen, bore witness to the curse's wrath firsthand. Despite attempts to rid himself of the gem's influence by casting it into a murky canal, fate conspired to return it to his possession, a grim testament to its power. In a final act of defiance, Heron Allen bequeathed the sapphire to the museum with a chilling directive, to entomb it, untouched, for three years following his demise. Was it a desperate plea for protection or a warning to future generations? Today, the Delhi Purple Sapphire remains a silent sentinel within the museum, its curse echoing through the halls. Whether it harbors true malevolence or serves as a cautionary tale against human greed, its legacy endures in the stories it whispers, tales of loss, despair, and the enduring power of superstition. Within the Smithsonian Institution lies a marvel of the gemstone world, the Hope Diamond. This 45-carat beauty radiates an entrancing blue hue, yet whispers of an ominous curse surround its existence. Legends suggest that this diamond is not merely a piece of jewelry but a bearer of misfortune, its history shrouded in darkness for centuries. The diamond's origins remain veiled in mystery, with tales of a stolen idol and a curse bestowed upon the thief. As it passed through the hands of various owners, tragedy followed in its wake. Jean-Baptiste Tavernier, the French gem trader rumored to have acquired it first, met a gruesome demise, torn apart by wild dogs. Was it mere coincidence or the curse exacting its revenge? Throughout history, the Hope Diamond graced the necks of royalty and the wealthy elite, yet prosperity always seemed to slip through their fingers. Bankruptcies, scandals, and untimely deaths haunted its owners, including Marie Antoinette, who faced the guillotine after briefly possessing the diamond. Today, the Hope Diamond remains a captivating centerpiece, but its legend endures. Does it truly possess a malevolent force, or is it a cautionary tale of the perils of greed and temptation? Uluru, the heart of Australia, soars from the outback plains. A sacred site to the Aboriginal and Angu people, it emanates a timeless power. Thousands flock to witness its beauty, but a legend whispers of a hidden cost. For those who disrespect Uluru, taking a piece of the rock as a souvenir, misfortune is said to follow. This isn't a campfire ghost story. Park rangers are inundated with a strange phenomenon, packages filled with remorseful letters and stolen rock fragments. Tourists, plagued by bad luck since taking a piece of Uluru, return them, seeking to break the curse. Financial ruin, accidents, and a chilling sense of unease become their unwelcome companions. Is it just superstition, or a potent reminder of the site's spiritual significance? The Ananga people don't speak of a curse, but of respect. They believe the rock holds a vital energy, and removing a piece disrupts its balance. The misfortunes that follow could be mere coincidence, but the sheer number of sorry rocks speaks volumes. A black diamond, the Black Orloff, also known as the Eye of Brahma, legend claims it wasn't just a gem, but a stolen piece of a Hindu god statue, cursed to bring misfortune upon its owners. The diamond's origins trace back to a daring theft, a monk absconding with the gem from a sacred Indian shrine. Whispers of a vengeful curse cling to the stone ever since. Several women who owned the Black Orloff met a tragic end, their lives cut short by side, each one a chilling testament to the curse's power. The stories paint a picture of despair. The curse seemed to target females, a chilling twist. However, when the diamond was acquired by a New York jeweler, the death stopped. Was the curse finally broken, or merely dormant, waiting for the next unsuspecting female owner? Nestled in the emerald embrace of Ireland lies Blarney Castle, and within its walls, a legendary stone. Kissing the Blarney Stone promises the gift of the gab, an irresistible charm. But a lesser-known legend lurks, the curse of stolen fragments. For those who disrespect the stone by taking a piece, misfortune is said to swiftly follow. Similar to Uluru's sorry rock phenomenon, Blarney Castle staff are accustomed to a peculiar sight, packages overflowing with remorse and regret. Tourists, initially charmed by their pilfered piece of the Blarney Stone, find themselves beset by a sudden surge of bad luck. Depression descends, jobs vanish, and finances crumble. Blarney Castle stands, a silent witness. Does the stone truly curse? The answer lies not in the stone itself, 
but in the unsettling stories whispered by those who dared to take a piece of Blarney's magic home, only to find it turn sour. High in the chilling embrace of the Alps, a discovery emerged from the glacial grip of time, Otzi, the Iceman, a perfectly preserved mummy over 5,000 years old. This glimpse into the past sparked scientific curiosity, but whispers of a curse soon followed. An unsettling pattern emerged, seven individuals involved in the discovery met untimely ends within 13 years. The first chilling sign, a researcher perished in a car accident en route to a lecture about Otzi. Another was swept away in an avalanche, a cruel twist of fate mirroring the Iceman's own death. The list of casualties grew, each death seemingly defying natural causes. A blood disorder, a sudden fall from a seemingly safe cliff, an invisible hand seemed to be at play. Can these objects truly possess negative energy, or are curses simply a manifestation of our anxieties and beliefs? And have you ever encountered anything like this that you believe could be linked to an object? Share your stories in the comments below. If you learned anything new from this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also, check out my other videos about paranormal events, disturbing historical occurrences, and chilling crimes and guys see you in the next one.